talk about, I just saw, well, I watched it twice. The Triumph documentary, Rock and Roll Machine, a friend of mine sent it to me. Uh, and uh, I can't wait to buy a physical copy. Let me tell you, man. This, in my opinion, is the best documentary bangers have done. Bangers film or whatever it's called. Holy crap. I mean, this one really... It made me cry, man. I'm, a, I'm such a wuss. But there's certain parts of this that made me cry. I mean, it's so well made. And, uh, you know, I'm a big Triumph fan. I've always loved Triumph. And, uh, you know, they mentioned things in the documentaries that I've been telling people all along. I said, man, Triumph, I saw Triumph at the Hollywood Sportatorium a few times. And it was as packed as a Motley Crue show was there or, Judas Priest, you know, all these big bands in the 80s, Triumph would fill out, fill up arenas. And here's the crazy thing about Triumph. If you do your research, man, they've only had one platinum album. The other, there's others that went gold, but only one platinum album. And yet, they would fill up arenas. It was mind-blowing. And yeah, they really had a great show. I remember, um, I think it was the Sport of Kings tour, that... The opening was the lasers, and then a face would show up in the lasers talking, introducing the band. And fast forward like two, three years later, I saw Motley Crue on the Dr. Feelgood tour, and it was the same exact intro. Same laser, same face. I was like, I remember seeing that Dr. Feelgood show going, what the fuck? Really? They totally ripped off Triumph. But, man, this documentary, uh, and, you know, the way it starts is like Sebastian Bach jamming. I think he was jamming to tell you sweetly now why I can't come to bed. I'm trying to think of the song. Everybody party 24 hours a day. Man, Rock and Roll Machine rules. It was such a great album, man. And uh, I never owned in the beginning. I know in the beginning and Rock and Roll Machine, uh, American version had like some tracks off both. Kind of like what ACDC did with uh, High Voltage and the TNT album. And, uh, yeah, there was a John 5 is in it, like praise and triumph, saying stuff like, why isn't this band as big as Led Zeppelin, you know? And, um, wow, man, it was so well made, and, and the things that this band went through, I mean, they were around since the 60s. Gil Moore and Mike Levine had separate bands back then, then they got together, and uh, then they were looking for, like, a crazy guitar player, an insane guitar player. And boy, did they ever find it in Rick Emmett, you know? And uh, there is going to, by the way, there is going to be some spoilers. Here, I'm going to talk about some spoiler stuff here. But um, it was amazing how they, you know, there was this, there were like this band that formed and then they already had their sights on, we're headliners. And they did like open for a couple bands and they didn't really like it much because they were headliners, you know? And... Um, they talk about how, you know, Triumph basically managed themselves. They didn't have a manager back then, and uh, it was like, do it your own way. And they talked about, you know, Gil talking about how he got a flamethrower and the pyros. And if you look at Triumph shows with all the lights and stuff, they, Triumph was just an amazing band, man. And Gilmore is like a total pack rat. It shows like where he has all this, like, everything of Triumph shirts, news articles, uh, you know, everything that, you know, singles, rare singles that they had out there. And uh, the Trailer Park Boys are, are in it, and they're pretty funny in it. And uh, Brian Posehn, um, which, by the way, Brian Posehn is a fan of uh, Thrasher Die, man. He saw us and he dug us. And Gil runs this uh, studio called Metalwork, which they built themselves back in the day. You know, they made uh, some of their albums. Uh, I think Rock and Roll Machine was somewhere else. But, you know, then they, they built their own studio and, and it's still there today. And this whole thing is a buildup. This movie is kind of like chron chronological, but at the same time, there's a lot of twists and turns. And they show these super fans that are in the movie and... Uh, the part that made me cry, man, there's two parts that made me cry, was one of the fans uh, had cancer. He's like a super fan. 
and he would listen to Triumph to give him strength. And I have said this, I'm sure I've said this on this video channel and also on the podcast. Fight the Good Fight is such an important song of my youth because it was self-empowerment. It was like, I can do what I want, the lyrics of, and they even highlight the lyrics in the documentary where, you know, you're the master of your own destiny, so give and take the best that you can. And this guy that, you know, was suffering cancer, uh, every morning when he would go get chemo, he would listen to Triumph. And the first song he would put on was Fight the Good Fight. And the part that made me cry was, he wrote Rick Emmett about his, you know, cancer. And Rick wrote him back, and it was a very heartfelt thing that Rick wrote him. And, you know, because Rick, Rick's brother died of cancer. So while this guy is reading what Rick wrote him, I mean, you can you see him getting teared up. He was like, this is my rock hero writing this to me. It was so emotionally amazing. It was just unbelievable the, the kind of feeling I got watching that. Really, you know, because... It, I identify as far as, like, what those lyrics did for me as a kid. You know, it wasn't only just Triumph. You know, I Am On Me from Twist Sister was another one. It was, uh, you know what? Uh, you say I can't make it? Well, just watch. Just watch me, you know? And uh, I'm very content with everything I've done in my life. And, I, and, you know, I wish I could meet Rick Emmett. And, you know, D, well, Dee Snyder I haven't met, but I didn't tell him. You know, um, your lyrics helped me so much in my youth because, face it, all of us, you know, when we were young and you young people now, you know, you're going through so much bullshit, you know. We all go through this bullshit growing up, trying to figure out what we're going to do, what we're going to do with our life. And these songs told us, you know what, believe in yourself. Go out there and get it, you know. And... Whatever roadblocks in front of you, crush it, turn around for a second, piss on it, turn back around and keep going, you know? That to me is Fight the Good Fight. And other songs like All the Way, they had a lot of inspiring songs. And Triumph was signed to a, a record label called Attic Records and they didn't even have a band yet. And they were saying, man, how, how did you get a record deal without having a band? And Mike Levine said, I'm good at selling. <laughs> he, he sure was, man. You know what it is to get a record deal without a band? That's insane. Now, if you're a big Die Hard a Triumph fan, um, you might be disappointed in some things. Like, they totally skipped this album, Progressive Power. They don't talk about this at all. And uh, Never Surrender, they, didn't, they, they showed some clips of when the lights go down and... Uh, World of Fantasy and so on, but they didn't really touch upon this album. And uh, Surveillance as well, not really talked about. And But they, you know, they really focused on <clears throat> uh, Allied Forces. They did talk about Thunder 7 a bit. Oh, uh, obviously Rock and Roll Machine and my favorite, um, Just a Game. They didn't really talk about stages. But um, it was just... Amazing. And then, you know, it talked about, you know, the downfall, which was, you know, Rick Emmett was kind of felt like he was put in a box. Also, record companies tell him they have to write a hit. And, uh, you know, he got tired of it and he left the band. And then they got this guy called, was it Phil X? The guy is playing guitar in Bon Jovi now. Um, they touch upon that a little bit. And then, you know, Rick Emmett, um, you know, there was a lot of animosity there. There was a lot of bad blood with the breakup and his brother before he passed away from cancer it was his dying wish he told Rick he said look man you need to like clean out the cobwebs get back with these guys it was his dying wish to see Triumph back together and that's pretty much the catalyst that happened I mean they were they were given an award and that turned into a reunion but a reunion that they played just a couple gigs they played a uh, Sweden Rock Fest which is an awesome DVD, by the way. I own that. And they played, uh, I think, uh, Rocklahoma or one of these American. And that's it. It was poof, you know? Because, you know, I hate to be the guy that says this, but, you know, for trying to be as huge as they were in the 80s, and now, like, there's no demand, it kind of does show how rock is kind of dead. I mean, but uh, I'm going to go off on a little tangent now about the rock is dead thing. Look, 
Rock will never be dead for me. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm going to die, you know, a headbanger and, and, you know, hard rock. I'm all, I, that, I'm in it for life. But at the same time, all you people that complain about rock ain't dead and this and that, listen, let's just face it, man. You know, it's not like it was. And sure, I mean, the legacy acts are still big, you know, your Guns N' Roses are playing stadiums and, you know, you can still pre still Priest and Iron Maiden and so on. Um, but uh, it's nowhere near as magical as it was back then. But at the same time, here's the positive part of it. Man, in the 80s, you know, you think about, all right, eight, uh, 80s is already 40 years from now. We had a great run, man, because think about 40 years prior to the 80s. It was the 40s. I mean, there was maybe like more, like three, four, you know, like, you know, your Sinatra's, Tony Bennett and stuff like that. But, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't like a, a popular thing with the kids, with the youth. And now the youth is into hip hop and, you know, auto tune and all that shit that's not even music. That's the majority of it, man. I, I drive around, all I hear is the hip hop blasting out of people's cars. But you know what, man? It, I got to say, it kind of bothered me back then. Kind of, a little bit. Now it's like, you know, I just put up the white flag. I'm like, you know, whatever. I lock my doors. I go in my fucking music room and I rock. I go in my car. I turn on my iPod shuffle and I rock. You know, whatever. It's not what it used to be. And the reason I'm bringing this up is because Triumph... This big band from the 80s can't go out there and fucking tour like they used to because there's not a demand for it. But we had the best run, though, man. And it's still going on in Europe and stuff like that. Rock, rock will never die. It's just here in America, you know, it's pretty dead. It's, it's on life support, but whatever. Here, in my house, in my soul, in my brain, in my cojones... It shall live forever, forever. Rock lives forever. You know, and what a great run. We outran all other music genres. And think about, you know, where is all this popular music today? How long is that going to last? I'll tell you right now, you look at popular music from the 90s and shit like that, that shit was so disposable, nobody cares about that shit anymore. I mean, of course there's exceptions. But, hey, let's get back into Triumph. So there is part of, uh, you know, they, they were getting fucked over by the record company, so they, so they sue RCA, and they lost. And they ended up having to pay $3 million to RCA, and in order for them to recoup that money, they'd have to sell, you know, more than they did for their biggest selling album, Allied Forces. And, you know, they went on, and... Uh, Rick, uh, they were get, bringing in outside writers, and Rick, and they, they told, you know, we need a hit here. Rick went home, and he wrote somebody out there. Now, what I didn't know, uh, watching this documentary, somebody out there was their biggest hit. I had no idea. I mean, I do remember hearing it on the radio and, uh, you know, and, and the video and stuff, but I never realized it was that big. But, yeah, it's Triumph's biggest hit. But, you know, now in retrospect, you know, if you're going to hear Triumph on the radio, it's magic power, lay it on the line, or fight the good fight, you know? But, um, yeah, so, you know, it's, it's a re really killer, and, now, you know, here's a spoiler. I mean, I already did, gave you some spoilers, but the end was another part I got choked up. Didn't cry as much, but tears came out, because at the end... It was all building up to this Triumph Festival they were having at the Metalworks studio where they only invited the super fans. And all these super fans went to this place and um, looking at all the memorabilia. And it's so touching to see how these people never lost uh, focus on Triumph. You know, this beautiful woman, you know, was there. You know, that she, her whole house is decorated with, with Triumph stuff. She even had a... Uh, license in front of her car that said Triumph. And um, so they go to this, at the end, they go there and they're all Marvel. So then they all sit down and they had a screen there. And they said, oh, we got the members of Triumph on video thanking you all. So they showed, you know, the members thanking the audience, you know, our fans are the best and blah, blah. And they're all there like, yeah, hell yeah. And then the screen falls and there's Triumph. 
coming out blazing with when the lights go down and the reaction of the people that are like, whoa, they did not see that coming. And I got tearful, man. How, how fucking awesome. They played really good and the place went nuts. It was such a great ending to this fucking movie. Keith O'Sullivan is in it for a minute. Eddie Schwong talks throughout it. The Us Festival story is amazing. I think you can see that on YouTube, though. They, they, the whole Us Festival thing. You know where, you know, it's heavy metal day and all the bands. That's another thing about Triumph. How, what separated them from all the bands. You know, you had your Priest and your Motley Crue and Van Halen, which is all, you know, leather or spandex and, you know, uh, lyrics about, you know, in goes my knife, out goes his life, consider that bastard dead. And, you know, the sinner, you know, all this. Where Triumph was just a positive band. And they go out on stage all dressed in white, you know, no stage, you know, thing. And phenomenal. Phenomenal scene of the Us Festival, which you should watch. It's on YouTube. Type in, you know, Rock and Roll Machine Us, Us Festival. Anyway, I got to say, man, I can't wait to get my mix on this because I hope there's some killer bonus footage, but the, the, the documentary was just one of the greatest rock documentaries I've ever seen in my life. They hit it out of the park. Banger Films, this is their best documentary to date, I feel, and I love their documentaries. You know, especially Metal Journey, and uh, they had a few of them. But the Triumph one, to me, is the best, hands down. So that's it. Praising Rock and Roll Machine, it's awesome. So thank you so much for watching. If you like to donate, I got a PayPal in the description below. And please subscribe to my channel if you haven't. Right on, everybody. Fight the good fight. You're the master of your own destiny. Stay frosty. Listen to Black Sabbath. And get the inspiration from Triumph. Because if you do, you'll be just okay, man. As long as you have your health, follow your destiny. Because you are the master of it. And smack them a gob. Bye.